Hi friends welcome to biology tutor today we are going to discuss about corn and barley for those who did not subscribe my channel please like share subscribe and don't forget to click bell button for notifications maize or corn maize is also called corn and it is zea maize a member of the grass family graminae or poaceae usually the grain consists of endosperm 82 to 83 percentage germ 10 to 11 percentage pericarp 5 to 6 percentage and tip cap of 0.8 to 1 percentage it is used for human and animal consumption and main products include starch corn syrup solids sugar beer industrial spirits etc the products of milling include maize grits meal flour, protein, and corn steep liquor. Corn flakes are made from maize grits. Corn flakes are made from maize grits. Important institutes related to maize research. Indian Institute of Maize Research is situated in Ludhiana, Punjab. Ludhiana is also known as Cycle City of India. International Maize and Wheat Improvement Center, Mexico. Next, the classification of corn. I am going to give you a brief introduction about the classification types of corns. Dent corn, yellow dent corn, reeds yellow dent corn, white dent corn, the botanical name of dent corn, Ziamis indenata. It is a type of field corn. The botanical name of flint corn, Ziamis indurata. It is also known as Indian corn which is Indian corn, the botanical name of Indian corn, Zia maize, Indurata, comes in a range of colors. Next, popcorn, the botanical name of popcorn, Zia maize, Everta. It's a type of flint corn but has its own size, shape, starch level and moisture content. The corn kernel expands and puffs up when heated. That's why it is known as popcorn. Next one is flour corn, the botanical name, Zia maize, Amelaceae. What is the significance of that one? It is a soft maize varieties that are normally used to make corn flour. Zia maize amelacea is used to make corn flour. That is that's why that is known as flour corn. Next one is sweet corn. Sweet corn. Zia saccharata or Zia rugosa. That is known as sweet corn. Also sweet corn, sugar corn and pearl corn. It is also known as Zia saccharata or Zia rugosa is also known as sweet corn, sugar corn and pearl corn. It is a variety of maize with a high sugar content, 10% when compared to 4% in field corn. Next one is waxy corn. Which among the following is waxy corn? Zia maize seratina. Zia maize seratina. The starch consists of very little amylose that is almost 100% amylopectin in zia maize seratina or waxicon amylopectin is almost 100% that is all about the classification of corn processing of corn it is harvested when its moisture content 18 to 24% next the maize kernels must be dried to safe moisture level about 12% to avoid losses Next, the milling of corn. There are two different methods are used, dry milling and wet milling. End products of dry milling. Germ is used for oil extraction, husk and deoiled germ and grits. These are the end products of dry milling. Germ is used for oil extraction, husk and deoiled germ used for cattle feed. Grits used for breakfast. End products of wet milling, starch germ, starch germ and feed are the end products of wet milling, dry milling. Dry milling method is divided into two. The first one is the traditional one and the second one is the modern one. Non-de-germing method that is the traditional and de-germing method is the modern one. Non-de-germing method. How to perform non-de-germing method? No separation of germ so corn meal has comparatively short shelf life as the germ is retained which contains 32 to 35 percentage of oil 
This oil in the presence of oxygen and lipolytic enzymes is prone to oxidative and hydrolytic rancidity. That is the problem with non dejamming method. The presence of oil which react with oxygen and lipolytic enzyme and prone to oxidative and hydrolytic rancidity. Removal of germ from corn produces corn products with much lower fat content and greater shelf life. So we have to remove the germ from the corn in order to produce good corn products with much lower fat content and greater shelf life. Next one is tempering and de-germing method. Removes most of the germ and hull and leaves the endosperm free of oil and fiber so as to recover maximum yield of endosperm and germ. Next steps involved in dry milling. Cleaning. Removal of impurities as usual in other cereals. Hydrothermal conditioning treatment. Adding water to increase the moisture content to 20%. Next de-germing. De-germing is the most important operation to remove germ hull and tip cap. To remove germ hull and tip cap from the kernel and to get the grit. De-germing and de-hulling is carried out in three ways. BL de-germinator, de-germer and corn huller. Second one with roller mills and sifters. Third one is with impact machines such as endoliters and gravity separators. The fourth one is drying and cooling of de-germer chalk. The de-germer products are to be dried to 15 to 18 percent moisture content for proper grinding and sifting. Rolling and grading the fifth one. Sifting or sieving is an important operation also called scalping, grading, classifying or bolting depending upon the means used as purpose. Sifting is the size separation that is also known as sieving. It is used to perform using sieves. Scalping is the coarse separation made on product leaving a roller mill or degemmer. Grading or classifying is the separation of a single stock, usually endosperm particles into two or more groups according to the particle size. Bolting is the removal of hull fragments from cornmeal or flour. Bolting is the removal of hull fragments from cornmeal or corn flour. Next, wet milling. How to perform a wet milling? Steps involved are cleaning, that is, not, that is uh, the removal of impurities, soaking or steeping. The main objective of steeping are to soften the kernel for grinding, facilitate separation of germ and gluten from the starch granules, Remove solubles mainly from the germ. The clean corn is steeped for 30 to 48 hours in water. Sulfur dioxide is added to the water at the rate of 0.1 to 0.2 percentage and the solution is heated to about 50 degrees Celsius. This condition prevents growth of putrefying microorganisms. The steeped corn attains a moisture content of about 45 percentage. Next one is the germ separation and recovery. Hydroclones, liquid cyclones are used to separate lighter weight germs. The germs are dried and processed for oil and meal. Next fourth one, grinding and hull recovery. How to grind and recover the hull? After separating of germ and screening of the coarse particles, the mixture contains starch, gluten and hulls. Starch, gluten and hulls. In this step, coarser hulls and fibers are removed. Next step, separation of starch and gluten. How to separate starch and gluten? The remaining stream of starch and protein is passed through the disc nozzle type of centrifuge where heavier starch is separated from gluten. In the first step, disc nozzle type of centrifuges are used to separate gluten from the starch. The gluten is dewatered using additional centrifuges and vacuum filters. The remaining starch slurry is washed and passed through hydroclones. The starch obtained is filtered and then dried to produce 
corn starch or it can be modified into the products like corn sweetener corn syrup fructose and and dextrose that is all about maize next one barley barley hordium vulgar the botanical name is hordium vulgar it is the world's fourth most important cereal after wheat rice and maize barley is an excellent source of vitamin b or b complex vitamins and minerals but it is very low in lysine and threonine content barley can be classified as hulless and hulled ones two types hulless and hulled ones barley and oats are unique among cereals which contains relatively high concentration of the mixed linked beta glucans beta glucans consist of beta 1 3 and beta 1 4 d glucans in the case of barley hulled barley 3 to 7 percentage of beta glucans hulless barley contains 16 percentage of beta glucans two important institutes of barley research institute of barley and malt sciences north dakota united states indian institute of wheat and barley research karnal haryana next chemical composition of barley grain and malt right side you can see it chart of this chemical composition of barley just read it thoroughly and prepare for exam barley grain is rich in starch and sugars relatively poor in protein and very low in fat barley is an excellent source of vitamin b1 b6 b2 and pantothenic acid it is also quite high rich in niacin and talk of all vitamin e is also present barley has a multicellular aluron layer in last day we had already discussed about aluron layers in the case of barley aluron layer is multicellular multicolored corn has some of its pigments in the aluron layer proteins vitamins are also present in this layer processing of barley the products of milling of barley pod barley pearled barley barley flakes and barley flour what is the aim of milling remove in order to remove hull and husk and convert into flakes or flour main steps of milling pearling milling and steps first step is cleaning next step is conditioning or tempering moisture is adjusted to about 15% by drying or damping and left for 24 hours bleaching it is done in the case of blue aluron barley some of the population like us citizens don't like this blue aluron layer of barley so we have to bleach this blue color for commercial purpose with moisture 1 to 2 percentage and sulfur dioxide 0.04% for 20 to 30 minutes then kept for 12 to 24 hours for the bleaching to occur next one is the aspiration aspiration means the removal of hull dehulled barley then pearling is the step then pearled barley convert with the help of roller mill then barley flour we will get barley flour for barley flakes steam cooking and flaking barley flakes are made from pearl barley by steaming and flaking on large diameter smooth rolls drying the flakes are dried to about 10.5 percentage moisture content before packing barley products pod barley and pearl barley are prepared by gradual removal of hull bran and germ by abrasive action in a stone mill production of pod barley is the first stage of pearling which may remove 7 to 14 percent of the weight of the grain further abrasion results in the removal of seed coat that means dust and pericarp aluron sub aluron layers and the germ leaving behind a central endosperm rich in carbohydrates and proteins pod barley scotch barley blocked barley has been pearled for a shorter amount time and still has most of the barley bran intact what is the difference between pod and pearl barley in the case of pod barley 
it still it has most of the barley bran intact pearling removes the hull and the bran layer that is known as pearl barley barley flour is made by roller milling of pearl barley blocked barley or unpearled hullless barley optimum tempering conditions are 13% moisture content for 48 hours for pearl barley 14% moisture content for 48 hour for unpearled hullless barley next barley flakes these are made by pre damping of barley groat barley groat means barley grain steam cooking of groats or pearled barley flaking and hot air drying of flakes next one is barley bran excluding the hulls it consists of testa and pericarp germ the tricellular aileron and sub aileron layers barley bran is obtained as a by product during barley milling process next one is malting malt is germinated cereal grain that has been dried in a process known as malting the grain is made to germinate by soaking in water and is then halted from germinating further by drying with hot air malting is the process of converting barley or other cereal grains into malt or use in brewing distilling and foods malted grains is used to make beer whiskey malted milk malt vinegar flavored drinks such as horlicks ovaltine and milo baked goods such as malt loaf bagels and rich tea biscuits confections such as malt sirs and whoppers main steps involve steeping germination and kilning what is steeping it is the most critical stage in malting the purpose of steeping is to increase the moisture content from 12% to 42 to 46% this is achieved through successive immersions and air rest over a period of 2 to 3 days During this process the grain begins to germinate and therefore produces heat and carbon dioxide therefore malting bridging of steeps is interrupted by air rest periods in the air rest the carbon dioxide is removed gibberellins plant hormones are synthesized by the embryo and diffused to the aileron layer of the barley kernel here they stimulate the production of the hydrolytic enzymes capable of degrading barley starch granules protein and nucleic acids enzyme production also takes place in the embryo germination germination phase is a controlled phase of malting and this germination continues for further 4 to 5 days at a temperature of 13 to 16 degrees celsius uh, depending on the product type being made and germination is considered complete when the endosperm is fully modified which means the cell walls are largely dissolved to expose the starchy interiors of the cells those catabolic enzymes are formed which will convert high molecular weight carbohydrates to lower molecular weight carbohydrates and sugars degradation of some proteins to soluble peptides has begun it will give nourishment to yeast in the fermentation process some will remain in the finished beer giving it mouth feed and tenure fully germinated barley is called green malt next step is kilning it is a controlled drying of a green malt reduces the grain moisture content and stops the germination process to render malt stable for storage ensure survival of enzymes and introduces desired aroma and taste kin drying is divided to four phases free drying stages reduces moisture to 23% intermediate stage reduces moisture to 12% the bound water stage 12 to 6% moisture and curing stage the moisture is reduced to 2 to 3 percentage principal changes occurring during kilning is the browning or maillard reaction we had already discussed about maillard reaction nucleic acid reacts with sugar 
which is responsible for the flavor and aroma of malt the interaction of reducing sugars and amino acids produces reductones these reductones will polymerize to form colorful melanodins or heterocyclic pyrazines thiophenes pyrrols and furans the oxygen heterocyclic compounds like furan that gives toffee or caramel flavors the nitrogen heterocyclic pyrazines gives roasted coffee like flavors or coffee nutty flavor stecker aldehyde oxygen heterocyclic dimethyl sulfide or methyl thiomethane gives pale malt flavor dms is an important flavor compound in pale malt and is formed under high temperature during killing stage by breaking off s methyl methionine breakfast cereals they are processed grain formulations suitable for human consumption primarily from corn wheat oats or rice usually with added flour and fortifying ingredients it can be divided into hot cereals and ready to eat cereals hot cereals made mainly from oats or wheat they require cooking at home before they are ready for consumption with the addition of either hot water or milk example oats oat bran wheat bran and porridge next one ready to eat cereals are made primarily from corn wheat oats consumed without further cooking in the home example corn flakes wheat flakes choco flakes muesli these are some of the ingredients cereals wheat corn oats mixed cereals may be used sweetening agents fruits flavors structural additives fats dairy products vitamins minerals thank you if you like this channel please share and subscribe don't forget to click the bell button to get notifications